On a prior video, I showed you how I power my dashcam using an OBD power cable instead of hardwiring it to the fuse box of my vehicle. And that video has gotten a very positive reception with almost a million views. So if you have not seen that video, I'll put a link to that video in the description in case you want to check it out. But a few people were left wondering if it was safe to power a dashcam using the OBD port of your vehicle. On this video, I'm going to show you what's inside of this OBD power adapter and we're going to talk about should you be afraid and should you be worried about using the OBD port for power. Hi guys, welcome back. I am Alex the Car Guy and on this channel I review cool car gadgets and other accessories that I find for your vehicle. So if those are the kind of videos you like, make sure you subscribe by hitting the button down below to see more videos like this. But now let's talk about the OBD power cable and I'm going to give you a very short answer and on the second part of the video we're going to get a little bit more into depth if you want to know the technical aspects of how the OBD power cable works. But let's talk about the OBD power cable. This is going to be connected to the vehicle OBD interface and that powers the dash cam. Now that can potentially scare some people because they're wondering, hey, I never heard of somebody connecting something to the OBD port that is not a diagnostics tool or that is not a code reader. All of a sudden you're connecting a dash cam, what is going on? In fact, I even had some people put in the comments, this is gonna blow up your car, this is gonna kill your car's computer. And the quick and short answer to this is, well, not really, because we are now seeing more devices that can be plugged into the OBD port instead of just an OBD scanner. For example, some insurance companies, if you call them up, they'll send you a little OBD2 plug-in that you can put in your car and with that they can monitor how you're using your car and potentially give you a lower price in your insurance. Now think about it, the insurance company when looking at anything that has to do with your vehicle they're looking at risk and they are they gonna send you a device that's gonna cause your car to break down, catch, catch on fire or anything like that they're probably considering that risk very, very small. And therefore they're saying, here, put this in your car. Again, this is the insurance company from your car saying, it's okay to plug in a device into your OBD port that is not a diagnostics tool. And some of us are using the OBD port to pull information off the car for performance data. Perhaps we are into racing the vehicle in a professional close track environment and we want to see real time information coming off the vehicle. That's when we can use one of these dongles. So while the OBD port was originally designed for diagnostics using an OBD scan tool, we are now seeing that there are more devices out there in the market that are using the OBD port for other purposes. But just because we are now using other devices in the OBD port than the original intended scan tool, does that automatically make using the OBD port safe? Well, I'll be very careful with anybody that tells you it is 100% safe to plug this into your vehicle. Anytime you're connecting something into a car that is an aftermarket device, there is the potential or something to go wrong. If you don't wanna have that potential risk, never connect an aftermarket device to your vehicle. Now, anybody that tells you this will 100% kill your car, I would also be wary of that advice because there is a lot of factors and you wanna understand how these devices work behind the scenes before you can make a claim like that. But let me show you what's inside of the OBD power cable adapter so we can understand how it functions, how the OBD port functions, what safety features are built in onto a car to prevent this from damaging the vehicle and more. And starting with the OBD connector, the size of it and the pins, each one, what it does is controlled by a document that we call the J1962 standard. And that document tells the manufacturers this is how they should work this is the size that we want them to be and each pin should do the following function and does that mean that each one of these pins is actually doing something well not really the standard only covers certain pins some pins are left available for the manufacturer of a vehicle to use them for some special purpose so this obd adapter even though it has 16 pins may not be needing or using all of them. But let's see what's inside of this bad boy, which I already took the liberty of taking the screws apart. And we can see here that we have the switch that can 
turn the different functionalities of the adapter and then we have a little PC board. I'm gonna pull this out right here and we can see here that there is a couple of microcontrollers, a capacitor. But what I wanna show you is that even though I have 16 pins in the adapter, if you looked in between this plastic part and the PC board, you'll see that not all the pins are being used. We can see that there's a pin right here being used and a pin right here being used, which are the ones that are right smack in the center, which corresponds with these two pins right here this one and this one. And if we keep going around here, we can see that there is another pin that is being used and it's underneath here. You can see how it kind of comes out on this end and that pin is all the way over here, number 16. So what does the two pins that are over here do? And what does this pin do right here? Well, pin four and pin five are providing a ground, which is negative. And this right here, 16, is providing positive power. So that is it. This connector is only tapping into negative and positive power from the vehicle. Every other pin is not connected. So just because I'm plugging this entire connector, you can see that the pins that are really only being interfaced to the car are a total of those three pins, the two for the ground and one for power. And here's where the fun begins. This is a schematic for the vehicle where I'm using my OBD power adapter, which is only using three pins. It's using pin 16 for positive and it's using pin four and pin five for negative. Now, if I look at the car schematic, pin four and pin five, sure enough, they are negative because they go straight to ground. Now, if I look at pin 16, that goes directly to my battery. So am I at any point touching the computer, the car's computer? Not really, I'm going straight to the battery and I'm going straight through ground. So anybody that tells you that this adapter is interfacing to your computer does not understand how to read schematics. And the other interesting thing is that the document that controls the OBD connector, the J1962 standard, describes that pin 16, because it's providing power, it should have some kind of protection. And if you follow the schematic for my vehicle, you can see that, yep, there is some protection. They have put a fuse in between the battery and pin 16, effectively protecting this against any kind of short. And this answers a common question that I get regarding an OBD power adapter. Is this fuse protected? Well, the fuse protection is built onto the car. However, if you look at the standard, it says recommended. It doesn't say that it's mandatory. So just because Chrysler decided to put a protection in here, does that mean that your car has a protection? That is really gonna depend on the car manufacturer. And I've seen cases in electronics where there are multiple fuses in line, maybe a fuse on the actual device and a fuse on the side that's providing power. So you have a total of two fuses, but normally one fuse is enough. Two, good redundancy, one is the normal practice. But earlier, I mentioned that this is not interfacing to the computer, and that is valid for this adapter in its working configuration. Because if you look at the adapter, the other pins are going to the computer. For example, you have pin seven, pin 12, pin two, pin nine, and pin 15, in some cases, in this case, because they're using the 2.0 engine, is there a possibility that during the manufacturing process, a little solder ball, and solder is what we use to mount the components onto a PC board, can a solder ball fall in between one of those pins? Imagine if a large piece of metal fell in between 12 and seven, and you got completely unlucky that it landed on those two pins and it got to you and you plugged it into your car, can it potentially affect something? It definitely can because now we are connecting two pins that are not meant to be to connected. And having worked in the industry for quite a bit of time, I can tell you that we have tests in process and sometimes at the end of the line to test that things like that does not happen. But even with all those tests, sometimes there are some things that escape. And that is just the nature of the business. And if you happen to be that few, very, very small percentage that, that escaped and it got to you, you could potentially have two pins that are not supposed to be connected, connected. But let's look closer at the risk of two pins being connected by accident at the factory. Here again is where it's gonna depend greatly on your vehicle because the standard that controls this connector does not specify all the pins. It leaves a lot of pins unused 
for the manufacturer to use them if they wanted to. For example, in this particular schematic for Chrysler, you can see that Chrysler is not using pin 1, is not using pin 3, not using pin 6, so you can see that they're hardly using the pins on the OBD connector. If you were happen to be unlucky enough that you got a bad adapter where something is shorting, let's imagine it's shorting pin 13 and 14. Is it gonna do anything to my vehicle? Not really, because the vehicle is not even using those pins. Same thing if that potential piece of metal landed in between 10 and 12, is it gonna damage my vehicle? The vehicle won't even know because nothing is connected. You have a, what we call in the industry a dummy pin, one that doesn't do anything. So the risk is reduced because now you are looking at that piece of metal has to land in between one of the working pins. And some of the pins are actually pretty far from each other. So when you look at pin two and pin four, there is an empty space in between pin three. So whatever falls in there has to be large enough where it will cross all the way from pin two all the way up to pin four. And you can see on here how far that is. Here's pin one, two, three, four. So you are talking a very, very long distance. So you're talking about having a very large piece of foreign object debris inside of this connector that escaped the factory. So as you can see, the main danger of connecting something to your OBD port, as far as I can tell, is gonna be two or more pins being shorted out by a piece of debris when they're not supposed to be connected. But that same possibility of that same potential short can occur on a normal OBD diagnostic tool. This is a tool that we connect as car mechanics to our cars all the time. So the same danger of potentially shorting out something in an OBD power cable is the same danger of connecting a standard tool to the device of a vehicle. Both of them are being made in factories. Both of them are being tested in process. Both of them can potentially have escapees that escape out of the, all the quality checks and can potentially make it to you and potentially create a hazard on your side. So the only way to ensure that you never damage your vehicle's electronics is never to connect anything that's aftermarket, never connect an OBD device to your vehicle. But that's kind of irrealistic because the OBD port was designed for us to use it. It was designed for us to connect into it. And in fact, at some point in time, your car is going to throw a code and a mechanic is going to have to connect an interface to it. In fact, if you live in one of the states that require a smog or some kind of check like that, the technician that's checking your car is going to connect a very similar tool, either wireless or with a wire, to your vehicle to check that it's ready for smog. So there is going to be some use of that port during the life of the car whether you want it or not. So hopefully this video gave you a little bit of background on how this adapter works, how the OBD adapter came to be, how it is controlling the industry and the different devices that are now being plugged into an OBD port. It is not really like a USB port where it was meant for you to plug hundreds of things in there. It was originally only intended for diagnostics tools and over time the industry started to come up with other devices to plug in there as well when they realized, hey, if we only use the pins for power, then that's all we really need. And if you guys have any other questions regarding the OBD2 adapter, please put that in the comments down below and stay tuned as I have a more advanced video covering in detail the OBD2 port as described by the J1962 standard, which is going to be of interest to anybody who has an engineering background or whether you like to learn electronics or whether you really wanted to know this in more intimate detail to really feel comfortable plugging it in and using it or not plugging in anything to it and not using it.